since it's been very cold out, I haven't been able to make much progress on the Massey Ferguson tractor. I can't really paint anything until it warms up a little bit. Pretty much ready to get the motor trans axles, the bottom end of the tractor painted, and then I'm going to start working on the bodywork. In the meantime, since it's too cold to do anything else, I figured I would build myself a hitch, receiver hitch, for the three-point on the tractor. Of course, you can buy these. They're kind of different prices depending on how well it's built. A cheap one's probably about 100 bucks. A good one could be as much as 250 to 300 dollars. I'm going to build one probably as heavy duty if not heavier duty than the more expensive one using basically stuff I have laying around. Uh, this hitch I was able to get out of a scrap pile in a body shop when a car is wrecked and they replaced the hitch. They uh, just throw these in the scrap so I can't see anything wrong with it so I cut the ends off for that and then it's a nice heavy duty two inch receiver. I have my chain hooks already on it so that gets me most of the way there. Then I have a piece of two inch, I think this is quarter or three sixteenths wall, that's going to get welded on here. I'm still working out the dimensions uh, for the height of the top link. Some of the ones I've seen, they range in heights, but about 20 inches from the bottom to the top of where the three point link would bolt to. So first thing I'm going to do I need to cut, I did have to buy these, these were about $15 for three of these. Why they sell three and not a two pack, I don't know, but I have a spare, so no big deal. Got these for about $15. So first thing I need to do before I can figure out how high that the centerpiece needs to be, I need to make the end caps which I'm going to use this scrap piece of 3-8 uh, three steel. I'm going to cut this to size, drill the hole, the 7 8 hole for the pin, and then this will get welded onto the ends. So I'll have, basically, I'll have the pin sticking out like this on either side. Once I have that, then I'll be able to put it in the tractor, set, figure out what height that top centerpiece needs to be, so that... You know, it's a happy angle when it's all the way down versus in the middle versus all the way up. Because I suspect it's going to pitch this up and down depending on the length of everything. So that's what I think I'm going to start on first. Get this cut up, get the holes drilled, mount these on there. I may tack this piece on here, leave it long, and then chop it down. I'll just have to see how it goes. So I got a little bit of work ahead of me with the cutting and grinding. This piece here is going to be the ears that the three-point link is going to bolt into. So it's all, like I said, mostly all scrap steel. The only stuff I had to buy were these. So I'm going to get started.
right, so my two end caps, I cut them, I ground them so that they're about the same. I'm ending, I'm gonna end up having to bevel these a lot to weld it properly, get good penetration. But just to start out, make them, doesn't take any more time to make them nice. So, got them all squared up. Scribe, found my center of the squares. There I'm gonna have to draw, I believe it's a 7 8 hole. So that's gonna be the next step. Drilling that hole through there so that uh, the pins will fit. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my little crappy Harbor Freight bench top drill press. I am going to just get a pre-drilled hole in there. Uh, first I'm gonna you know use a center hole starter and then I will drill you know a little bit larger just a pilot hole. So first thing I'm gonna get it clamped in the vise. Next thing we're going to come to my bigger drill press which is a very old vintage uh hand crank job but it seems to drill holes just fine still it is made by champion blower and forge in lancaster pennsylvania which isn't terribly far from here so it's kind of cool i found this in a yard sale i need to the gear the reversing gear was damaged on here so i have it brazed I just have to wait to get together with a friend who's going to help me recut the teeth. So right now you have to manually, you know, retract the, the headstock manually by spinning this. Uh, in the future, I'll have a lever here that I can throw and then it'll reverse on its own. So I'm going to start out with a, probably about 3 8 bit and work my way up to 7 8 through so I'm gonna manually reverse it you just have to come up here and spin this back out let's lift the headstock back up This is what's neat about this drill. It automatically advances down with this little catch there. As this spins around, it'll walk. And it puts constant down pressure on the tool, which allows it to drill through this thick steel. Okay, the old drill did the trick. It drills a beautiful hole, the finish on the inside. It's really amazing. If the bit doesn't ever get hot. So yes, it takes a little more physical energy to do, but it accomplishes the same thing as a power drill press would do. So 
So the way this is going to work, this nice fit there, go with the flat washer here. We'll wrench that tight. And then it's going to get welded onto the end cap here. That washer is actually a perfect size for a perfect spacer. It should hold it in there real tight. So what I'll do is I'm going to get all the edges beveled. I'll tack it in place and then uh, we'll fully weld it out. Uh, one thought I had was to weld the nut on the inside so that you could take this out if you have to. I don't foresee me breaking this, and if I do, worst case, I'll have to grind, you know, grind out the weld, pull this whole cap back out. I think that's, you know, probably reasonable for what my uses are going to be. Okay, I have my edges beveled up both sides fits rather nicely in there um, normally I would just fire up the MIG welder and MIG this but I did just recently get a TIG welder so I think what I'm going to do since I just got this TIG welder and trying to learn how to use it better I'm going to either just tack it with the TIG or maybe do one pass with the TIG as a root pass and then crank up the MIG welder and burn it all in. Don't know what's better to do, but I think I'm just going to give that a try. I also think I'm going to do a little tack on this nut, even though I, I tightened it down as tight as I could get it, and the lock washer's on there, I don't want this thing backing off, because if it breaks or bends, that's one thing to cutting it off, putting a new one on, but if I need to cut it off just because the nut got loose, that'll aggravate me. So. I'm going to weld that on, then I'm going to tack it on with the TIG, and we'll just go from there. If the TIG's working and looks like I'm getting a decent weld, I'll I'll try more TIGging. If not, I'll revert to the old uh, MIG welder over there and just fire it on with that. Okay, that went pretty well. Keep in mind, I'm not a welder, and I've only TIG welded one time on scrap steel so far. So this is uh, a test. So it looks all right. This first one I did, I was going a little slower, and I have a lot more undercut, but it penetrated well. There are no stacked dimes, but I think they'll work. All right, I just finished up. What I ended up doing was I did a root pass with the TIG and burned it in real, real hot. Uh, there was a little bit of, you could see it was digging a little bit deep on the sides. And then I did a cap pass with the heat turned down a little bit and a little more filler rod. It's not the prettiest weld in the world, but I'm pretty happy with how it, how it melted in there. So pretty certain that this isn't going to fall off um we're gonna let it ride like this i'm not even gonna bother trying to make it so overall pretty happy with it just need to keep practicing and i'll get better at it so today here's where we're at i did some cleanup final pass is welded on here did some grinding on the edges, rounded over the edges. I also put this into the tractor three point to kind of get an idea of how tall the vertical post needs to be. So I have that figured out. So the next step, I'm gonna grind some paint off. I'm gonna take this vertical post, 
get this cut to size. After that's ready to go, I'm going to take this piece of 3-8 steel and make the tabs that are going to stick out past the top where the three point, the three quarter hitch pin will go through. So I'm going to have to cut up this into two rectangles and then drill the three quarter hole through there. So I'm going to get started on that stuff and I'll uh, bring you back when we get... getting a layout of where you know the pins going to be through here I think I've decided on my height looks pretty proportional from the store-bought ones of these contraptions they, they're ranging about they're about 20 inches overall from the bottom to the top so right now mine's measuring from the bottom to the center of the hole 20 inches uh, if you go from the three-point pin height you're about maybe 18 and a half inches from pin height to pin height. Looks like it's pretty proportional. I'm going to be adding in a diagonal brace here. So I have about 14 inches down at the bottom. So if I come up 14 inches, that'll land me on this plate. So I can have my diagonal will be mounted welded to this plate and down. You know, it'll look something like something along the lines of that. So next step, I'm going to get the uh, square tubing cut to size, and then I'll start, uh, i got to drill my holes for the pins. I really need to invest in a large drill press. I just drilled these three quarter inch holes through both of these suckers here, and that was quite the workout. But, produced a beautiful hole, so looking good. Three quarter inch bolt, goes right through them both nicely. We'll take a break and then we'll get back on in a little bit. Okay, so here's where we're at. I have this uh, center tube all figured out. Down inside, you should always drill holes so that water has a way out whenever you're sealing something up. Um, if you don't have a weep hole in here, condensation will build up inside and, you know, over a million years, it'll rot this out from the inside out. So I drilled a hole in the bottom. And then the water will leak through into the receiver. And then I'll, I'll do the same thing on these tubes on the bottom. I'll drill two holes so that uh, any moisture can weep out. This is all centered up. I'm going to tack the tube on. And then I have a little piece that will cover up the top to seal that. And then we'll get it all welded up. Alright, so I did two passes of root and a cap on the bottom. Came out alright. Pretty decent. Like I said, I'm no TIG welder. This is completely new to me. Uh, I did this just a single pass up top, holding this cap on. Have to just do some grinding. Next thing will be attaching my plates. These are going to get on there. Something like that. Got to do some grinding and beveling, so I'll get back when I get that done. Alright, now I've gotten the side plates. I put some bevel 
on the edges, kind of rounded the edges over so they won't be sharp. I took the top link and I have it set so that, as you can see, there's, depending on, no matter where this thing is, there's still about, I left about a quarter inch of clearance between the bottom. You know, I keep it as low as possible, but I think that will be sufficient for clearance for the bottom of this as it pivots up and down. So next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get these tacked on and then start welding them out. And as you can see, it's getting pretty close to being done. The only thing next I'll have to do after these plates are attached would be my diagonal bracing. Then I'm going to come back in here with some diagonals on each side. So I'll do them next. But first, got to get this situated and uh, ready to go first. Okay, everything got uh, two passes, so we got a root and a cap on everything. Welds look okay, good enough for me. I got all the sides done. I even was able to get it inside here, so everything's completely welded out. Won't have to worry about any water getting in between the uh, layers. So next thing I'm going to be doing is my diagonal bracing. That's on next. We'll let it cool down. Let it cool down, and then we'll start uh, designing our angles. Okay, I have my angles cut. Got this side done too. Getting ready to just tack these on. I think it's going to come out pretty nice looking 45 degrees should give it plenty of strength okay just finished up that's a lot of TIG welding for me it's probably the most TIG welding I've ever done but I gotta say the practice is making it better so I guess it's worth doing um, you can see we got it all the way welded all the way around. The only part I didn't do was up inside these corners. I don't think I can fit the TIG torch in there. Don't know that I'm going to worry about it. I'll have to think on that. Um, but as you can see, you know, we got, they're not pretty, but they're done on there. This side looks pretty good. Got it all welded up. Let it cool off. And then I guess I can uh, mount it on the tractor. Guess that'll be the next step. Here's my three-point hitch, receiver hitch that I built from some scrap I had laying around. Uh, the only thing I had to buy was the uh, link pins here and this chain hook. Everything else I had pretty much on, in, you know, left over from the sawmill project and other things. So it came out really good. Seems to fit up nice. The angle looks good and everything. Uh, the chain hook, the idea with that is... If I need a skid a log, I can back up, back up to the log, choke the uh, choke the log, hook the chain on here, lift her up, and then you can skid with it too. So it's kind of a multi multi use attachment. The idea here, I'm mean, this is just primer right now. I'm going to paint that probably red, maybe the gray. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. We'll get to that when I get to the paint. But it came out really good. I'm happy with it. So thanks for watching.